Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be showcasing the HubSpot service hub, or more specifically, the service element as part of the HubSpot CRM suite. The first part of customer success is being able to communicate with your actual customers or prospects. HubSpot has the ability to have the inboxes tool. And what the inboxes tool is something that looks like this, which allows you to have a centralized place to manage all of your comms. This can be through channels such as a team email. It can be through forms, or it could even be through Facebook Messenger. By connecting these different into integrations into your actual conversations inbox, what this allows you to do is actually consolidate all the communications coming into your organization and allowing your customer service teams to not be split across different platforms, speeding up their workflow and overall delighting your actual end users. From within HubSpot, you can quickly see all the conversations that are coming in via the timeline in the middle. And you can see the overall chat stream in terms of what's coming through, such as the welcome message that a chatbot posts, as well as where that conversation has come from and a what conversion page, to what the actual unknown visitor is actually responding, to seeing what your internal teams are then responding back. You also have the ability down the left-hand side to quickly filter between the actual different conversations that are coming through, whether it's looking at all the conversations that are still open, being able to look at just the ones that are assigned to you, as well as looking at the ones that are coming through different source, i.e. email, versus live chat. And you can quickly get an understand of where your conversations are coming from at any point in time. What this also allows you to do is by clicking into the source, you can quickly see where your internal teams are self-assigning, reassigning, closing, or reopening, allowing you to have a full audit trail on the actual conversation itself. What you could also do is when you're on a conversation, if you have an unknown visitor and you were to know who the actual visitor is, you have on the top right-hand side, a bar for your associations. This allows you to actually marry up who this pest contact is at any point in time to basically be able to get all the past contacts you may already know in your CRM to associate them with the actual conversation. You will now see that you've got access to the actual right hand side and you can create tickets as well as actually have the contact as well. What this allows you to do is on the actual front end, be able to understand what the actual chat is corresponding to as well as who the owner is, meaning that you can self and reassign conversations at your choosing. So you can quickly see that I've reassigned this to myself which has now fallen into my actual conversations, which I can now monitor and respond back to either via chat. I can either do it via my team email so I can actually send it to their email address if I was. And if I wanted to, I could call out of it if the options are available. You can also collaborate with other members of your team just by asking them in the actual portal. So you could actually ask someone who is in the portal and write a message so they can collaborate. This allows you to quickly reassign and have seamless handover in terms of the end user, meaning that journey to becoming an evangelist is not obstructed or obstructed in any form of way. Once you've solved the problem, you can quickly mark it as closed, which will then take it away from the actual open list in terms of your conversations. If at any point you want to go back and look at all the closed conversations, you can do so just by actually clicking the pre-selected filters. You can also sort via newest to oldest to quickly understand at what point these conversations are coming in. As you can see, as you have more conversations and you know who the actual contact is, you can see along the right hand side, the information from your CRM part of the product will pull through, such as their email, first name, their last name, the actual lifecycle stage, as well as lead status and their last activity date. You can also have company records and fields that are held against the conversation, as well as the ability to create tickets, as well as deals, allowing you to have a seamless interconnected kind of link across the actual full CRM Sweet. I Meaning you can quickly at a click of a button, click to the help desk, which will take you to the contact record, but I could very much then go to the actual ticket and vice versa. What this allows you to do is, again, all the conversations that you're having, whether you're having different teams on different areas of the product, collaborating to one central source of truth, meaning that everything is fully audited. For example, if you have a ticket that is unassigned and you want to take ownership, you can actually select yourself and you can actually create tickets, which allows you to have a better overview of something that needs actual follow-up actions. You may be um, reset password credentials. You may want to put that into a specific pipeline. You can then assign that, whether that is to an actual customer success team or someone that else who the accountability is. You can set where the source came from in terms of it came from live chat, as well as a priority. And you can quickly associate that to existing companies in your database as well. And by pressing create, the ticket will now be created with all the information we learned from the actual conversation as well. And that's the conversations tool within actual HubSpot. With any kind of actual live chat or chat bots, you can actually customize your inbox settings by going to the bottom left and customizing your availability management. This allows you to see all the people within your portal and what inbox they have access to. Meaning that when you go back to your conversations inbox, you may have a team that works from the support inbox that doesn't need access necessarily to the 
sales inbox, which allows you to quickly monitor and restrict access by teams, as well as setting their status if they are away, if they are available for what particular inbox that may be. You can also customize this in terms of your setup. So you can actually see that how channels are being created by a ticket forms, contact us, so on and so forth in terms of how conversations are then in. In terms of that journey from taking something from an anonymous visitor and being able to associate it with a contact, as you can see down the right, the next ongoing feature with the Service Hub is the ability to have tickets. With the Service Hub, you can quickly access tickets by going to Service and Tickets. And what this allows you to do is further build out on those actual conversations. So what you can quickly see is that I created a ticket for the reset password credentials. I can filter this just as I could filter my conversations down to look at only tickets that are assigned to me. What you can then also do is filter this by other members within the actual portal if you wanted to see how them tickets are then progressing because you may have a front help desk team that is working from the conversation inbox and then a later customer success team that's working from the overall tickets in terms of where the processes lie. The best part of all this is progressive profile in the actual ticket. So actually getting more information as they progress through the pipeline, as well as the ability to actually go into that ticket and view more granular detail based on the activity that may have happened, whether the task has been complete, any tacky activity. So as you can see, I've moved it from new to waiting on contact and that has a full audit trail in terms of customizing that there on in and in terms of when the ticket was first created. You can filter the timeline down to just view notes as well as emails, calls, tasks and actual meetings as well. Similar to the other HubSpot products in the actual CRM suite, you can actually log calls and activities. So if you knew that someone came through your live chat, you couldn't solve it in the conversation, it had to be going to a technical ticket. You can then actually put notes on the ticket such as escalated to the security team for the actual password reset and save that note there as well. You also have the ability to create a task to follow up, but otherwise that will then store it on the actual contact record and you can see it will add it to the timeline and this will consequently build out that central source of truth. You can actually move that ticket through the actual stages, but as a customer success manager or a service manager, you can quickly see how quick the velocity is that tickets are moving through each stages with the ability to set decay time on your actual cards, such as that after 14 days, start flagging up at any tickets that are not having any last recorded action, meaning that you can stay on top of all the tickets that are raising and ensure that everybody's getting a SLA driven experience. In terms of where we go from from there, so we've gone through how customers go from anonymous into a non-contact and then get escalated into a ticket. The next part of this, if this is the back end, how do we stay on top of this from the front end? What HubSpot allows you to do is under the service tools, you have access to a customer portal, which is currently in beta at the time of recording. And what this allows you to do is essentially build out this view that you've got in the back end, but very much so for the actual front end as well. Being able to have a page title, having this set on a certain domain, as well as only giving people access that you want to give access to. So allowing anyone to register to get into your customer or having only customers be able to access from lists that you create within the CRM. You can manage what ticket properties are shown in the actual customer portal, i.e. what's in the back end versus the front end. And you can actually customize the actual template that that looks like as well. And as you can quickly see, what they'll look like is by going into this, you will build out with your own branding and your own kind of credentials in terms of what that looks like. Someone can click into a ticket and quickly understand the front end versions of what you then want to show. You can customize both the actual listing pages I just showed on screen, as well as the ticket detail page as well, meaning that you've got full flexibility in terms of your organization to customize that there on in. This allows you to basically from the front end and the customer's point of view, be able to see for this ticket, any com communications they've had with your support team, as well as if they want to attach the actual file name as well and send conversations. Meaning that at the point a conversation is kind of moved over to a ticket, the conversation doesn't necessarily stop. It allows them to stay in tune with your organization as the ticket progresses through the escalation or the customer success process. So with that setting, it allows you to both from your back end have seamless collaboration and handoff between your actual front desk and your service teams. But it also allows your customers to be at the center of everything and staying up to date with all the movements that may happen necessarily with that as well. The other benefit of the service hub is you have the ability to have a knowledge base and what that knowledge base looks like is something like this. The knowledge base allows you to quickly create articles that may be come on the back of common questions you get asked in terms of your organization. It may be on the back of common articles you may be asked for in terms of how to use your product, your service, that may be better suited in a step-by-step -step guide as opposed to going through your live chat, meaning that you can ease in the actual load on your front desk teams by creating articles that are there to inform and therefore help to allow your actual end users to be in charge of their own journey to becoming an evangelist with your organization. From that, you can actually filter from a certain date range. So you could filter this based on what you want. So we could actually filter from January, which will retrospectively update all the statistics based on that. You can quickly see how long people are spending on the article versus if people are rating it as helpful, 
versus if people are rating it as unhelpful. From here, you can actually see which search terms have no results, which basically gives you opportunities to create articles, meaning that you can create articles that have tags, which for example, if you wanted to create a tag for pricing, you could create articles around your pricing structure in terms of how you define how you price your product, where they can get in contact with that. You can also see how many recent searches in this date range put searches for, and then what the search terms was as well. Again, by having your date range filtered, you can see what the most search terms were and if they found the result or not, meaning that this will give your content teams or your customer service teams inspiration for what articles are actually needed based on what your customers are actively asking for, meaning that you're always in tune with what they actually are. With anything, you can actually see your articles, so you can create articles based on what's been published versus what's in draft, as well as what's been archived and not deemed relevant. You can then filter your articles down by who the actual author is versus what the category is, or actually filter it down by access if it's a private article where they have to register to access versus if it's public and accessible to anybody on the web. What that then looks like is if you click into an article, it will give you the more drill down particulars of the actual articles, how many people have viewed it, how long they spent on the actual page, as well as how many views that's had over time. So we can quickly filter this down and you can quickly see from what source, where the views are coming from, and you can turn this on or off depending on what you want to see. Being able to see not only how people are accessing and what search terms are actually putting into your knowledge base, but where they're coming from in terms of source acquisition. If you've got any feedback on the article, every article comes built in with a happy or a sad face, meaning that you can quickly rate how helpful that article is, and you can roll out optimization campaigns to quickly jump on these articles and actually better understand or refine them to what's needed. With anything with HubSpot, everything's ease of access, meaning you you can quickly jump into your article and everything's built into best practice, such as your, your H2s, which is then built out into your actual knowledge base article. You can actually bold, you can add bullet points, you can number, you can insert personalization tokens if you wanted to, meaning that if you have known features in your CRM, you can leverage this as well. You can have video in there if you wanted to have a video series in your knowledge base articles. You can customize the URL that your knowledge base articles go onto, as well as what language the actual article is in, as well as what category this would sit under on your front end knowledge base as well as a subcategory if you wanted to go into particulars. What this allows you to do is quickly categorize your knowledge base articles and quickly understand what categories are driving views. You can then have tags, which are basically what if someone searches a word, what tags are related to that word. So if they search for APIs, it will bring in this article, which can be leveraged in chatbots and chat flows as well. Lastly, you have the ability to lock down certain articles between public or private, meaning that you can actually add registration and only give it access to a particular list as well. And from there, you're probably asking, okay, this is great in terms of setting up articles and basically giving access to my knowledge base and seeing how them conversations go to tickets and then how you can create self-serve content to help your prospects or customers on their journey to becoming an evangelist. But what does that look like? With anything, the knowledge base comes with a preset template, which is built on user experience. And this is proven in terms of how to quickly work. So you can quickly see that at any point you can search for answers. So if I were to search API in here, it will now bring back all the actual articles that are tagged with API. And this is ultimately what your template will look like. You can customize the branding. You can customize the actual categories that show up on the left hand side, as well as a link to your main site. All the analytics you're getting on the articles, you can actually send traffic to your main site as well. Meaning that once they have self-served, there's always the actual ability to customize this further as well. At any point, you can actually go in and actually edit your knowledge base via the actual settings, meaning that you can customize the domain your knowledge base sits on, as well as if it's private, in terms of crawler access, the actual language of your knowledge base, as well as if you want a support form or a module based on related articles. With all that said and done, we've gone through basically how someone comes from going through live chat, starting a conversation, which goes into a ticket to creating self-serve customer portals and knowledge base articles. Now, the question we get is how do we expand the coverage of those knowledge base articles? With the actual service hub, you have the ability to create chat flows or as they're commonly known, chat bots. These allow you to, at a glance, quickly have the ability to create a chat flow. This can either sit within Facebook Messenger as an automated series of messages or the website as well. You can create live chat, which is what connects people on your website to your conversations inbox. And that's how conversations can get stuck. But what you can also do is create something that has a knowledge base and live chat functionality, meaning that they can flip between if they want to speak to a human versus if they want to just find articles that can answer their queries quickly. Meaning that if I wanted to search for APIs, I could do that. What I can then do is I can actually roll out preset templates in terms of getting started, meaning that there is no barrier to entry in terms of setting up your own chatbot. Meaning if we wanted to create 
create a chat bot to point them around the website, we can create a concierge bot. We can select what inbox that is going to actually filter into. So what we could do is have a look for our test or support inbox. You can also have a meetings link if we wanted that to be in there as well, if they wanted to request it. So book in time with an actual rep. And what we can do is select the language that this chat bot's going to be in. By pressing create, this will then roll out the overall functions, being able to actually quickly customize your welcome message as well as subsequent actions as well. This will allow you to then quickly build out that based on these categorized actions, so we can customize the welcome message. It will then say, what are they looking to do? Well, you can add quick replies. So we could say, learn more, get help, talk to sales, talk to customer success, like so. Within HubSpot, because it's connected to a CRM, you can save these to properties as well that are held in your database, or it can just be a tag that is saved within this conversation to point them around. In this instance, we're just going to leave that blank. And if we quickly refresh, you will now see that we can actually create actions based on if they performed a similar option. So if they select talk to sales, we can actually start asking them questions before we hand them off to sales that saves into their contact name. Meaning by the time the conversation comes into your front desk help team, you've already got that information out of the box. You can then have meeting links. Again, allow people to book in with a frictionless approach to your customer success. With all chat flows, you have the ability to either put it across your entire website or on particular pages, as well as adding even more granularity in terms of who sees your actual chatbot based on actual website, visitor data, or even the different geographies they're accessing your website from. Meaning that if you're a multi or international based client, you may choose to actually only show this live chat to the UK. So we could actually put that in, meaning that they will only get access to your UK team. So you can have an inbox for different geographies. You can have an inbox for different functions. With anything in HubSpot, you can customize the actual display, meaning that you can actually customize what the actual chatbot looks like. So something a bit more on brand, you can customize what they're called, as well as what happens in terms of their display. So should it pop up on launch? Should it only show the actual chat launcher? Should it show a welcome message once they load? So you can tailor this to what you need from your overall website. What this allows you to do is also customize that when it should actually pop up. So should it be when they're just about to leave the page, i.e. because they may not have found a response? Should it be when they've spent a certain amount of time on the page so it gives them enough time to actually solve their issue first before prompting them or based on page scroll as well. Lastly, you do have the options in terms of the actual typing play. So if you want to make your chatbot very quick versus you want to be more natural in approach and when the actual session will time out if there's no recorded activity. So after 30 minutes, one hour, one day, one week, one month, as well as what the error message would be, as well as language and availability as well. With all that said and done, we've gone through basically how someone comes from an anonymous into a ticket, into how your actual customers can self-serve themselves and keep in up to date with their ticket to finding information on their own accord, then how to promote this via chat flows and using concierge bots. And last but not least, the power is in the reporting. And with the service hub, you do get full functionality in terms of reporting as well by going to analytics tool and then actual service analytics as well, which is currently a beta at the time of recording, which allows you to quickly understand some preset reports such as support volumes. So how many tickets have been created by what particular rep and what tickets they actual correspond to as well in terms of the ticket category. You can then filter these on and off, meaning you don't have to have separate reports uh, against your limits, meaning they're a lot more insightful and basically usable from the point of creation as well. You can then filter based on this quarter and see what the actual uplift is is in terms of comparing to the previous period. You can also look at over time what this is looking like in terms of the quarter on quarter for your customer success team. And you can filter this down by particular teams or just particular reps as well. By With anything on these, you can actually save the report and add it to a dashboard if you find yourself regularly coming back to it as well. If anything, you can actually see the reporting limits on the actual chatbot. So you can actually look at when a chat comes in, how long are they waiting for based on the actual source, meaning that all your customer front desk teams um, answering things timely. You can see how long it's taking particular reps to go from creation of a ticket to closing a ticket. And you can actually drill down into what tickets are actually causing that as well in terms of where they came from, what the state now is, what the close date actually was versus what's the create date for that particular ticket. You do have the ability to export and save it to dashboards if that's a common report you find yourself looking for. You can then look at over time, is it decreasing in terms of what it's taking to close tickets based on new processes, based on team hires, based on SLAs being changed. Lastly, with the service hub, you do have the ability to track customer success. So you can actually see that how customers are finding your approach to customer service in terms of these knowledge base articles or 
were actually sending pulses from the actual database, meaning you have the ability to send feedback surveys. What this then allows you to do is create service, which could either be a customer service, which is a blend of customer support, customer satisfaction, and customer loyalty, or you can actually go with the preset in terms of actually looking at what these necessarily are. What we can actually do is create a custom survey, which allows you to either have this via an email, this goes out to your database in terms of your actual contacts in the CRM, or you can have it just as a shareable link that you could give to your sales reps that they can choose when they distribute this feedback survey out. With anything, what you can actually do is quickly build out your survey in terms of what information you want to collect. And you can then save that into feedback properties, meaning that if a contact such as Samuel Banks was to fill this out, and then scores a 10, it's not just lost in the moment, it stores against their contact record, meaning you can create customer based on their feedback over time. Meaning that you can see that if in Q1, they gave you a six, and then in Q3, they gave you a 10, you can then do calculations based on that to judge the success of your customer service team. You could add different reports such as NPS, which are out of the box, which are built in with the net promoter score universal kind of definition in terms of nine to tens of promoters, seven to eights of passives, and zero to six of detractors as well. You can make fields required if you feel that you do need to collect that information and you can customize the overall look and feel with headers, further text to help basically get the most out of the actual customers filling in the survey. You can customize what the actual thank you looks like in terms of when they go to your survey and fill it in. You can customize the icon as well as what's been says and based on what kind of response, what the message is. Lastly, you can actually build your recipient list. So if it goes out based on when they became a customer, so it's an automatic survey. If it's starting from scratch, which you can build on properties across the different objects within HubSpot, as well as if you just wanted to create one based on certain contacts or lists, you can actually notify certain teams about feedback responses, such as certain teams or actual individual users as well. If the contact who fills in this survey has a known owner, you can actually send it. So they may fall outside of the team. So they got a copy as well to follow up in a more humanely manner. With that said, as you can see, we've gone through some of the service analytics that are out of the box. You do have access to dashboards. You can create a dashboard that brings together all the different reports that you may have across the different products. And you then have the ability to actually build this out. HubSpot out of the box has a huge report library that's built across all the different products. And you can actually take certain elements based on the service service analytics to build out a dashboard that's really unique to you in terms of what that looks like, meaning that you can pull reports based on your most viewed knowledge articles. You could have a look based on your customer feedback over time and what your actual surveys have obtained. You could have a look at what your actual team or rep are actually doing, whether it's from a deal or I can do it on a ticket as well. So we can filter by tickets and we can see, okay, the ticket totals over time. So we had a huge spike in January. Maybe that's a bit different because it's the start of the year and you can start to spot trends and correlations as well. With anything, if that's not serving your actual Active needs, you have the ability to create custom reports with the custom report builder on all these kind of items that you set up in terms of the actual tickets. If you wanted to actually build a report, we can marry this with data that we collect from the different objects within HubSpot as well. Meaning that we can combine feedback with deal amounts. If we wanted to see, does feedback correspond to the amounts we're closing with the sales team? You can create these reports in HubSpot because you have all of this data in this central source of truth. Meaning that having your different functional HubSpot only enriches the data you get out on the back of it as well. And in terms of that, that's everything I wanted to cover in today's demo of the service hub. With anything, these features do change over time and they're only becoming greater and far more advanced in terms of powerful and again, retaining that ease of access from taking someone from anonymous to an evangelist via a frictionless customer service approach. As always, if you've got any questions, be sure to leave some comments on this video. Take care guys.